lay aside this old way now because many many times when people get saved yes your spirit man is saved but there's still a warfare with your mind and your body still want to live the same old way we came to him who is a, a living stone and we also became living stones and these living stones are now gathered together in the building of a spiritual house and in this spiritual house we have holy priesthood there is an increase of carnality in the church today without because there is no room for the holy spirit that's why the, the devil would rather just have people just gather just for gathering sake this is a spiritual house that i'm raising with spiritual stones and these spiritual stones will continue the spiritual house where my spirit will indwell and the, in that hour there will be holy priesthood First Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 6. Shall we all read together? One, two, three, go. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, that the sincere milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as of a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, have been built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I want to share in the next few minutes a message I've titled, You are part of a spiritual house. Say to your neighbor, you are part of a spiritual house. One more time. Yesterday, by the grace of God, I... I spent some time with all our pastors and leaders away and I, I shared some things from this verse of scripture which I thought was just for the leaders. But in the course of preparing again for this morning service, I sense in my heart God wants me to bring it to the old house and el uh, elaborate more on this 
um, verses, verses of scripture. That every believer within a local church and members of the body of Christ in general must begin to see themselves with a big, in a, with a bigger picture. That you are part of a spiritual house. Say a spiritual house. Spiritual house. And then in understanding this subject, I'll take you through some verses in this same uh, scripture reading to see how we come about this house. In the earlier verse of that scripture, Apostle Peter was writing and saying to the church then, who have come to know the Savior, and say, now that you are saved, it's time to lay aside some old way of, some old way of living, some things you are accustomed to doing. He mentioned in verse 1, Therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire a pure milk. It's almost like, lay aside this old way now. Because many, many times when people get saved, yes, your spirit man is saved, but there's still a warfare with your mind and your body still want to live the same old way. Peter said no. Just like uh, 1 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is what? A new creation. All things are what? Passed away. He said, and all things are what? Have become new. Now, that's the spiritual reality that over a period of time becomes a phys physically manifest. But there has to be specific steps and specific action that we take that helps us to see that actualized. Now, he said... As newborn babes. Can you imagine? They are adults, but they say they are newborn babes. As newborn babes. We are not babies per se from the mindset of just physical baby. But every child of God, when you get born again, you are a spiritual baby. And it says just like a baby. You don't start feeding that baby with meat and start feeding that baby with a, a pandemium overnight. It said, but you desire. Sounds like desire. desire. The sincere make of the world that you may grow. Sounds like grow. grow. I like that. Because as a child of God, we are either growing or we are groaning. But God never made us to groan, but to grow. Say to grow. grow. One more time. Grow. To grow. To grow. Now, let's go further. He said, now, if indeed, verse 3, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So when we got born again, we tasted. The psalmist said, oh, taste and see. That what? The Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Many of you can recount when you just got born again. There was a year of excitement. I'm born again. Something new has happened to me. And people would understand what you're saying. We're wondering what's wrong with him or wrong with her. But only you could tell what you were experiencing. It's almost like I've tasted something. As a matter of fact, because of the new life you've tasted, something that you are used to even physically tasting, you don't want it again. So you went out with your friends and, and the same joint, you would normally go out with them and they offer you some stuff. You say, oh, I don't want to take it. I don't want to take that. I don't want it. What's wrong? As they'll say somewhere, Bobo, what's wrong? We have not, we've been doing this together. I say, I've been saying no. It's almost like I've tested something. It's more than physical. And that which I've tested is even informing my test. Because in reality, when you test of the Lord, it will inform your taste. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I said, those who taste of the Lord, it will inform their taste. Amen. It will inform the taste with regards to what they eat, what they drink, what they wear out the leaf. May God give you a new taste. Amen. Now let's go on. He says here, in verse 4, coming to him as to a living stone. Someone say a living stone. <laughs> so when we came, when we come born again, we came to him. Say we came to him. One more time. And he that we came to is called the living stone. Say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The living stone. One more time. I'm going somewhere this morning. Because to, to, to talk about the spiritual house, you have to talk about the stones. But he that we came to, he who saved us, the Bible's describing as 
the living stone. And what Peter was saying really, he was declaring what was foretold of him by the Isaiah the prophet. In Isaiah chapter 26 verse 16, Isaiah 28 16 says, Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tri stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. So there was a prophecy concerning Jesus by Isaiah the prophet. Say amen, somebody. God was saying, I have laid in Zion what? A stone. For what? A foundation. Say a stone. For a foundation. What do you use a foundation for? What do you use a foundation for? To build a house. A foundation is laid for what? To build a house. So God was saying through his prophet, I'm about to build a house. But I need to lay a foundation. But I've laid in Zion a stone. So when we came to him, we came to Jesus who is the living stone. Say, Jesus, the living stone. Jesus, the, living stone. the psalmist was then saying in Psalm 118 verse 22, see, talking about this stone. He said, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This stone that was laid was rejected. It was what? This stone which the fathers, which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Who rejected the stone? His people. John 1, 12 says he came to his own, 11, he came to his own. His own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave what? The power to become what? The son. When Jesus came, he was not accepted. He was rejected. Say he was rejected. He was rejected. One more time. I wrote this on my note. Christ's rejection paved the way for our election as God's elect without campaigning. Come on, give God praise this morning. Say with me, Christ's rejection paved way for our election as God's elect without campaigning. We never need to campaign. See how much money is spent by many of the people who want to become elected officers in our government. They will have to campaign and campaign and campaign. When was the last time you were begging God, God, please save me from hell? No. He came to his own. We were not the one looking for him. He came to seek and save that which was lost. Aren't you glad this morning that his rejection paved for your election? Come on, give him praise this morning for me. And this is it. When we came to Jesus, the living stone, we were also shaped into living stones. Say so we came to the living stone. And we were shaped into living stones. Don't forget, a stone was laid. A chief cornerstone was laid for a foundation for a building. And you don't just use one stone to build. You need many stones. Look at that scripture. In 1 Peter, verse 4. It says there, coming to him. As what? To a living stone. Say coming to him. As to what? The Bible is describing Christ as a stone. Him. I mean, when was the last time you saw stone and say, hello stone? But it was symbolizing of Christ. Coming to him as to a living stone. Comma. Rejected indeed by men. But chosen by God and precious. So when we came to him in verse 5, he now says, You also are living stones. Coming to him as a living stone, verse 5, you also as living stones. Did you get it? Let me tell you, hello, living stone. Coming to him as a living stone. You also as living stones. 
So the result of coming to him is that we are shaved into living stones for the use in the building of a spiritual house. Say for the building of a spiritual house. One more time. One more time. So when we, con when we connected with the living stone, we were shaped into living stones. Now, he wants to build a spiritual house. Look at it now. Verse 5. You also, as living stones, are being built. Say, are being built. Oh, hallelujah. Say, are being built. The building is not complete. We are still being built. That's why even when Christ was on the earth, he said, I will, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We have been built. Built up as a spiritual house. Say built up as a spiritual house. What makes this house spiritual? It's the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Say a spiritual house. Inhabited by the Holy Spirit. Makes it spiritual. One more time. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible was making us to know. Paul was trying to the Corinthians. He said, don't you understand that you are the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 3 verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3 16 says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? The spirit of God does what? Dwells in you. Now, that reference is not just for you singularly. It's for the entire house of God. The body of Christ. That's why you will see in many, many Christian cycles today, they kick against the move of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. Because they've been deceived by the devil. It's, it's without... The Holy Spirit is just a dead wood. It's just a dead house. It's not spiritual. And that's the reason why there is an increase of carnality in the church today. Without, because there is no room for the Holy Spirit. That's why the, the devil would rather just have people just gather just for gathering's sake. But no move of the Spirit, no connection with the Holy Spirit, that's not a spiritual house. We might as well call it something different. Maybe the house of steak or the house of kebab. But we have not been brought into the house of steak. We have come into a spiritual house. Somebody say a spiritual house. One more time. Now, as we are built into a spiritual house, then we become something in that spiritual house. Look at it now. Verse 5. First Peter 2 verse 5. You also, read everybody, go on. Now let's stop there. See how the trend begins. We came to him who is a, a living stone. And we also became living stones. And these living stones are now gathered together in the building of a spiritual house. And in this spiritual house, look at it now. We have holy priesthood. We have what? Holy One more time. Holy a holy priesthood. In the Old Testament, when people hear the word priest, they only just think of the priest that went into the tabernacle once in a year with one animal in his hand to offer sacrifice on behalf of the sin of the people. And while he's going to the tabernacle, they have to tie a chain by his feet should in case he mess up. 
and he got knocked down by God's glory and he dies in that place. But not again in the New Testament. Because all this priest does year in out is to go in and offer a sacrifice and slaughter this animal so they can place the blood right in the tabernacle in the holy place. But Jesus Christ himself, our high priest, offered his blood. Because now the tabernacle is no longer just a tabernacle built with human hands. The tabernacle now is his church. I say the tabernacle now is what? And ladies and gentlemen, on the altar, in this tabernacle, is no longer blood of bulls or blood of goat. It's the blood of the lamb himself. Because his blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat. Now in place of the priest that went in and out, guess who are the priests now? We are the priests. Tell your neighbor, hello priests. Hello, One more time. Both the laymen and all the ordained ministers, we are all priests. Because now we understand the priesthood of believers. Let's go on. You also, verse 5, as living stones have been built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Say a holy priesthood. One more time. So the question is it. We have become this holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Oh, hallelujah. Say a holy priesthood. To offer up. What do they offer up? One more time. Spiritual sacrifices. The priest in the New Testament was offering some sacrifices. It was a sacrifice of bulls and ram that he did year in, year out. He said, but not again. This is a spiritual house that I'm raising with spiritual stones. And these spiritual stones will continue spiritual house where my spirit will indwell. And the, in that house, there will be holy priesthood. There will be what? One more time. I pray all the saints in the church will begin to see themselves that they are priests of God. One more time. They are what? Priests of God. Because the devil often makes us, you know, this priesthood... It's for the man on the altar. Let him do all the preaching. Let him do all the spirituals, whatever he does. You can just live your own life, your own self. He's separate. You are separate. No. Both those on the pulpit and those on the pew, they all have a holy priesthood. Say so we are all holy priesthood. The question is, don't you understand that for those then who have this calling into the fivefold ministry, the Bible said, to whom much is given, much will be required. But the, but the reality is this everyone is giving something. I say, what? Is One more time. The only difference is that those who are called into the full time ministry, much is given, but much will be required. Much is given. That's why someone like Paul would say, I, I put my body under. Let's, after I preach to others, I become a castaway. Because, let's, let's listen to me. Both those who are in the pew and those on the pulpit, they will also give an account. Don't let the devil fool you and say, you have a lower standard, they have an upper standard, so you can live a lower life. Say not again. Say so we have all been called to a higher life in Christ Jesus. Verse 5. You also, as living stones, we are not dead stones. So we will not live a dead life. You also, as living stones, have been built up. Build up, not down. You will not go down. Amen. We have been built. We have been built. I can't hear you. One more time. One more time. 
No one that Jude then says, but you, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourself. No more will the devil break you down. We have been built up. Built up a spiritual house. A spiritual house. A spiritual house. A holy priesthood. For what purpose? To offer up. Say built up. up. To offer up. up. One more time. Offer Offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Say spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God. Through Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining me in today's broadcast. I truly believe that you've been encouraged, you've been inspired, and you've been challenged. All the comments that have been coming uh, back has been very encouraging to me personally. Thank you for those ticks and likes on the social media. Uh, it goes a long way in encouraging us to keep on doing what God has called us to do. Now, for the benefit of those who have not made the most important decision of their life with regards to answering this one question, What will happen when I die? I want to encourage you this day to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's very simple. A. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. B. Believe that Jesus died for your sin. And C. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2 from verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It says it's not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. You can do the same thing I did as a 12-year-old boy many years ago when I gave my life to Christ. And all I had to do was do exactly what the Word of God says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10. That if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sin, he says you will be saved. For with the mouth a confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Now say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. Save me. So I confess you with my mouth that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin. He was buried. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you prayed it from your heart, God heard you and you are saved. So I congratulate you for becoming a born-again Christian from today. I'll be more than happy to encourage you in this work if you email me or send me a message and I'll be able to get back to you. And the next time when I come back through the social media, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you. <laughs>